First of all, I teach that the actor and the animators are shamans and they're talking to the tribe and that there's a circle in the dirt and when, you, when you're animating, you're stepping into that circle and you're talking to people. They want to hear what you have to say. So it's not just a craft. It has to do with communication. And the issue is, why are you talking to the tribe? What do you want to tell them? Why, if you put a circle in the dirt, they'll come because we are a storytelling creature and they want to hear what you have to say. And I tell people to be students of human behavior, to be students of what the world is doing, that if you want to be a good storyteller, read the New York Times, read Moby Dick, you know, uh, rather than an animation book. It's, uh, we need to have, we need more shamans today. And I think that animating is an honor. I don't think it's just something to do. I don't think it's just a fun thing to do. I think it's an honorable thing to do with your life. Well, you cannot separate acting from story. You really can't. Acting from story, acting from, you know, and from character. If it's not there, in the script, if it's not there, even the best animator can't fix it. And part of the problem that we have in the, in, with the studios, the big studios, is that they're locked into spending huge amounts of money, a couple of hundred million US dollars on a movie. In reality, you don't need to spend that much money to make a really good movie. Despicable Me did not cost that kind of money. Uh, you don't need to. But they're locked into this. And the, the solution, the fix, if you want to get better performances, is to actually downsize, which I don't think they're going to do. And uh, to downsize to a reasonable budget uh, to where they can then... Uh, the, you know, in philosophy, Aristotle says that, you know, that the avoidance of failure is not the same thing as the pursuit of success, okay? A company like Pixar, when they had Toy Story, they had one script that nobody wanted to do, and they wanted to make it with computers when nobody was doing that. They were pursuing success. They wanted to do what they wanted to do so bad. Now they're part of Disney and they have, they have uh, uh, release dates that are projected for two, three years in a row. And they have to come up with movies that fit into the release dates. And they have a couple of hundred million dollars to spend on each one. So you start with a release date and a pile of money. And then you try not to screw it up. Mm -hmm. And you try to make the movie fit the release date. And that turns, as far as I'm concerned, that turns storytelling on its head. That storytelling should begin with a story to tell, like Walt Disney had a story to tell. And I think that that, that needs to come back. Not that we need to regress, but that needs to come back because that, it, that pollutes the water. Uh, I think for these for these movies and I don't think there's any fixing it because they're locked in they're painted into a corner of spending that much money and it, I, I hope that the next generation doesn't do it it's charming if you're gonna have a movie about a bad guy then let's go ahead and steal the moon you know it's charming in the old-fashioned kind of way with new fashion technology uh, it's uh, you. You cannot not like that movie. I I watch Despicable Me and Despicable Me Two, and I sit there and chuckle and laugh all the way through those movies. I I love those movies. I think they're wonderful. 
And as far as the acting goes, the acting is caricatured acting. And it's it's right. I find I, I find the acting quite admirable in those movies. I think they're doing a good job. And uh, But I think that the reason for it is that you've got storytellers behind it. There's an intent to communicate that you can pick up. There's some mind back there trying to communicate with other humans about something. It doesn't feel like product. It feels like a story. And most of us, I think, will respond to that story. And I think that's what you're seeing in the box office for that movie. It surprises everybody. They shouldn't be surprised. Humans are storytelling creatures. We need to hear them, and we want to hear them, and we will respond to a good story. Remember that when Iron Giant came out, the studios killed it. They killed it. It was a failure. The movie's a classic. It's a classic. It's a wonderful film. And the audiences have said, uh-uh, you can't kill it. No, no, this is a good movie. And they've made it the classic that it is. It's one of the best movies in any list of 10 best movies. That one's on there. And the studio said that it was a flop. They said Cars was a success. Iron Giant was a failure. There's something not right about that. For me, FMX really feels like family, and that's, that's the thing. It's like a, a, an extended family dinner uh, where you get relatives that you haven't seen in a long time and some that you have married into another family, and all of a sudden there's somebody new that you've never met. But it has a family feel to it. It doesn't feel cold. And it's a, it's, it's, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with people in all kinds of, in, from all kinds of, of, of businesses, from game companies to v films to education, so many people, the top people in the world, they come here. It's such a privilege to spend a few days at at at, uh, at FMX. It's uh, you know, it's a cornerstone in my in my year, frankly.